Anyway, let's move on to the next act. Now, the next act, his first name is John. He's named after an American toilet. Um, <laughs> his second name is Dowie, which is an old Scottish word, which means dull, dour, and mean-spirited. So, here he is, a dull, dour, mean-spirited American toilet, John Dowie! I'm here to entertain you <laughs> With songs about depression <laughs> Misery, despair And bestial obsession <laughs> I hope to make you happy <laughs> by looking on the black side Cos I find life as funny as cancer up the backside <laughs> My lover was a midget She gave birth to a tumour <laughs> Grandad always told me Don't lose your sense of humour <laughs> Daddy was a leper <laughs> Mommy is a psycho <laughs> My brother is a hunchback <laughs> My sister works in Tesco <laughs> Nuclear oblivion <laughs> Is just around the corner <laughs> The human race is riddled <laughs> With fear and paranoia <laughs> The world is run by madmen they want to hurt and maim you And while we're on the subject I'm here to entertain you <laughs> Is anybody here? Uh, is anybody here from Lancashire? Piss off I lived in Lancashire. I lived for three years in a little village called Bacup. Miles from anywhere, surrounded by grass. Miles and miles of grass. What's it for? It's for the sheep. <laughs> Screw the sheep. We do, I, we do quite often, eh? <laughs> what else can you do in Bacup? I used to live next door to a man called Donald at a greengrocer's shop, and I thought that would be handy living next door to a greengrocer. How wrong can you be? Donald had a catchphrase. The catchphrase was, I'm sorry, it's the one thing I haven't got. <laughs> Can I have a pot of jam, please, Donald? I'm sorry, it's the one thing I haven't got. Give me some metal underwear, then. I got home late one night, and Donald was standing in the shop door with his girlfriend. She had a hand down his trousers, and he said, I'm sorry, that's the one thing I haven't got. <laughs> miles from Manchester, there stands a living hell. A foxy place called Bacon, a place that I know well. It's full of folks with throats like goats, they bleat all bleeding day. E, I, O, R, A, N, A. Want to have a good time there, stay home and break your arm. Bake up life is one long episode of Emmerdale Farm. <laughs> Eating cheese from Lancashire that smells like bottled gas. There's lots to do providing you like counting blades of grass. <laughs> Read the Bake Up newspaper, the headlines are insane. Bake Up man falls over. <laughs> and then gets up again. <laughs> And in the Bake Up Cinema, the same film every night. The colourful world of Rochdale in glorious black and white. If you like entertainment, Bake Up has a lot about. Spend the evening in the pub and watch the fire go out. The weather is consistent, it will not make you brown. But the only time it doesn't rain is when it's pissing down. <laughs> so those of you who like to live the lifestyle of a stone, why not be advised by me? Let Baker be your home. When life is at an end, you get three choices I have found. Be buried, be cremated, or live in Baker Town. <laughs> I 
I'm lying in the ground being et by worms. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> or am I having one of my funny turns? <laughs> No, I'm dead. <laughs> my eyes are glazed and my skin is blue. My blood's congealed, my brain is too. I look and feel like a thrown up cup of cold stew. <laughs> I'm not a living man and I come from Birmingham. I'm dead. <laughs> Don't have a soul, I can't get any dole. I'm dead. <laughs> body keeps stumbling and crumbling away bits keep dropping off every day it's hard to ask girls for a date when you stink of decay <laughs> i'm lying in the coffin waiting for the last trump to sound <laughs> how am i supposed to hear it when i'm six feet underground <laughs> there's a hole in the ground but i don't dig it i'm dead dead to the world i'm dead from my feet to my head Dead as a doornail, dead as a dodo, about as much use as a stringless yo-yo, unable to breathe, fellow or belch. Let's look on the bright side, at least I'm not Welsh, oh no. <laughs> I'm only D, E, A, D, dead, dead, ever so dead, I'm D, E, A, D, dead, dead, remarkably dead, I'm D, E, A, D, I'm dead. Funny thing happened on the way to the studio. <laughs> Got killed in a car crash. <laughs> we were driving along quite happily when all of a sudden the driver, who's a sentimental sort of bloke, swerved to hit a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know is a tree coming towards me at 100 miles an hour. I thought, what's this, the Mark Boland story? What? Bang! I hit the windscreen, the whole of my life flashes in front of my eyes. I dropped down dead from boredom. <laughs> You recognize that one? <laughs> they laid me in the ground like a grow bag. <laughs> the coffin was cold, dark, damp. I heard the first thump of soil landing on the coffin lid. There's always some sod making a row when you're trying to get eternal peace. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about the man in the grave that's next to me. Perhaps he's best described as dead boring. <laughs> he scratches at his bones, he grizzles and he groans, he keeps us all awake with his snoring. <laughs> Alive, he used to be a lecturer in sociology, liberal and to the nth degree, a real humanitarian. He was clubbed to death by a couple of pop crazed black homosexual vegetarians. <laughs> I'm. Where do you think you're going? I'm fascinated. I am fascinated by the paranormal. <laughs> I can't move around in my act. <laughs> Even if you do wear pumps. <laughs> Come to my gig in pumps. <laughs> these are proper shoes, these are. They look like pumps, but they're proper shoes. Not khaki old pumps. <laughs> He's got nice shoes on. He's got nice shoes on. She's got very nice shoes on. And you're wearing pumps. You're crap, you. <laughs> Absolute crap. I was just going to tell I am fascinated. This is, this is called pro working, you see? <laughs> keep going, keep going. I am fascinated by the paranormal, the occult. Is there life after death? Is there life before life? Is there anything happening tooting back after half past ten at night, really? <laughs> Interesting questions. I met this girl, she told me she's played by poltergeists. Whenever she has an orgasm, wardrobes go flying across the room. <laughs> And that night, that night, we had sex together. <laughs> Nothing moved. <laughs> Just me when I had a climax, my contact lenses shot out, which is <laughs> really bizarre, because I don't wear contact lenses. <laughs> and she gave me this great book to read, all about Yuri Geller, the man who used to bend spoons and stuff, you know. I read this book, fascinating, and I sat in an armchair with a spoon, concentrating, concentrating, concentrating. Nothing happened, I thought, sod it, threw the spoon away, couldn't straighten up. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I had 15 pints of Guinness, followed by a chicken vindaloo. <laughs> I 
And this morning had the most amazing out of the body experience that you've ever seen. I also. I also have precognitive dreams. Well, I don't, but I dreamt I was going to have precognitive dreams. <laughs> That's right. I was, uh, I was married for a while. When I was married, I was desperately in love with my wife. And I just had these nightmares that she was leaving me and she was spurning me and rejecting me. And I used to wake up screaming, you know, and eventually she left me because I woke up screaming every night. Which is... <laughs> and I should have known the marriage was going badly, you know. I should have known there were hints. I could have picked them up. Male ego, I ignored them, you know. But I got home late one night and she was taping all the albums. I didn't think about that. <laughs> I like to think of myself as a humanist. My problem is I can't stand people, you know? <laughs> they do these horrible things that really wind me up, like say, you must come around to our place for a meal. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't like food. Food's boring. Food takes up valuable space, which I need for drink. <laughs> <laughs> and when you go around to someone's house for a meal, you spend the whole evening talking about food. As soon as you get through the door, gosh, that smells nice. <laughs> Trap. Always say that. Never ever say, what are you boiling up? Some old soiled nappies or something. <laughs> It's disgusting. That's the moussaka. When you eat the stuff, this is really delicious. You must give me the recipe for this. This is super. This is really delicious. If it was dog shit, you'd do the same thing. <laughs> this dog shit's terrific. Was it an Alsatian or Cocker Spaniel? <laughs> and a nice glass of horse piss to wash it down. <laughs> and the thing that really annoys me about people is they will insist on wearing Sony Walkmans. <laughs> they always sit next to me on the bus with their Sony Walkmans on. And they got that noise going on all the time. And they always forget they're wearing them. All of a sudden they go, heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> and those things used to really wind me up until I realised what they've got playing in their headphones. And what they've got playing in their headphones is left. Right. <laughs> left. When you listen to this next number, when you listen to the piano playing, ask yourself the qu this question. Did the Chevaliers do this? <laughs> Ken and Brenda had the best of it. <laughs> they got together when the Beatles split. Ken and Brenda have a Hesse Young wall, a bidet in the bathroom, a Hockney in the hall, 800 albums, two singles and a stereo. They haven't got a video. They haven't got a video. Ken met Brenda when he broke with Pam. On a yoga course, on a Welsh ashram. <laughs> Ken and Brenda took a magic bus and went to live on an Israeli Yonki Butts, but they both got bored with it and dysentery also. <laughs> they didn't get a video. They didn't get a video. They returned to London and a Notting Hill squat. Where Brenda did the tarot cards and Ken grew pot. They both took acid, but it cost them dear, so they got into est and home-brewed beer, got pissed up nightly and told each other what so. They didn't get a video. They didn't get a video. Now Ken's giving lectures at the LSE. And Brenda's writing articles on PMT. <laughs> Their daughter's called Tamsin, their son's called Luke. She is into Adam and he is into glue. And Ken is wishing he could get into the au pair, but no. <laughs> and now they've got a video. <laughs> now they've got a video. <laughs> Ken and Brenda asked me round to dine. I said how great the food was and I took some wine. I was so impressed with their commitment to the left and how Karl Marx is wonderful and property is theft that just before the camembert and after the Bordeaux I ran off with their video I ran off with their video